Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Atrophy of Soul, and today we will be talking about one of the most inspirational and perfectly crafted video games of all time. Yes indeed, we are here to talk about the last of- Wait. Wait a second. One of the most inspirational and perfectly crafted video games of all time? Really? The Last of Us? I'm describing The Last of Us right now? This can't be right. It must have been some sort of strange typo. Let's let's fix that really quickly. My apologies. Okay. Uh, I think we have something that makes a lot more sense now. Okay, let's try that again without the blatant hyperbole. Good lord. Uh, from the top. Okay. <clears throat> one, two, three. Three, two, one. One, two, three. My name is... Okay. Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Atrophy of Soul, and today we will be talking about one of the most influential and masterful works that the medium has to offer, the heralded masterpiece, Naughty Dogs, The Last of- I did it again! Heralded masterpiece? The Last of Us? Really? I mean, perhaps if it were released back on the PS1, it might have been? I suppose describing it as influential was apt, but it was influential for all of the wrong reasons as far as I'm concerned. I actually think that the main reason that the game was so widely praised and influential was because the developers were brave enough to reintegrate design philosophies that had been deemed archaic by modern standards. In an industry where regenerating health and infinite lives are the norm, a game daring enough to include health packs, life bars, and real-time crafting would definitely be perceived as innovative and fresh. What's old would obviously become new again, but when it really comes down to it mechanically, The Last of Us is shallow and barely scratches the surface of what a modern day survival title could be. When judged as a video game, it is merely above average. Its stealth system can range from intense to laughably bad due to erratic AI behavior. The partner and enemy AI seem to have a very rough time understanding one another. Since it is possible for the two sets of AI to converge during stealth sequences, it can lead to some hilarious and baffling results where partner AI gets stuck on enemy AI creating some laugh-out-loud situations where your partner can be used as a human shield, preventing enemies from rushing you. This remains a consistent problem throughout the game, except in sequences where you are forced to explore an area alone. These sections are by far the best in The Last of Us as far as I'm concerned, because there is no immersion-breaking partner AI running around with reckless abandon. It's simply you against the odds, and it feels far more rewarding because of it. This isn't to say that the AI doesn't still have its issues during these solitary sequences, however it is to say that the game mechanics seem to have an easier time functioning at a more consistent level when there is no partner AI to keep track of. Notwithstanding, the enemy AI does seem to have a sixth sense of sorts. When you're in an area near a group of enemies, those enemies always have an understanding of where you are on the map. For example, if you were to take Joel and stealthily move him inside of a building, all of the enemies that are closest to Joel will begin surveying the building that you moved into. If you were to then sneak out of the building, the enemies would follow suit. Through experimentation, it can become relatively easy to exploit the AI by leading them around and taking them out one by one. Since you are completely in control of their actions and reactions, causing them to behave in a way that best suits you is simply a matter of proficiency. The way that your adversaries are programmed makes them feel artificial and lacking in any sense of self-awareness. Enemies have a stark sense of ambivalence toward their own self-preservation. In some instances, they will realistically scatter and hide at the sound of gunfire, while on the other hand, they will rush you with a crowbar in spite of the fact that you have a shotgun aimed directly at their heads. It's clear that the enemies should have been programmed to react to what weapons the player is using and what weapons they themselves have equipped. If an enemy only has a melee weapon, they should always try to flank you. If an enemy has a rifle, they should always try to keep distance between you and them. If an enemy has a shotgun or a pistol, they should always try to keep up suppressive fire. Depending on how the player reacts, these enemies should react in kind. 
For example, if the melee wielding enemy is spotted by the player and is staring down the barrel of a shotgun, your first instinct should be to run away and hide. This would force the player to chase them down and deal with them as soon as possible as opposed to what's in place now, where the player is instead chased down by these enemies in spite of how ill-equipped for the encounter they actually are. This inconsistent behavior wouldn't be much of an issue if The Last of Us only consisted of infected enemies, but when the human enemies come across as less imposing and believable than their infected counterparts, it completely pulls you out of the experience. The tension that the developers attempted to convey through the world building and layered characters is undermined directly by the facile game systems at play here. When the player is actually given a chance to interact with this richly detailed world, the illusion quickly crumbles under the weight of its own artifice. And this is what you people hailed as the epitome of game design? I simply do not see it. Masterpiece is definitely not a word that I would throw around when describing The Last of Us. I actually feel that it's likely Naughty Dog's weakest game because it is by far the least polished and most inconsistent that they've ever released. To play devil's advocate for a brief moment, I can understand why many people out there consider The Last of Us to be one of the medium's greatest masterworks. The way that Naughty Dog has constructed its characters and the world in which they inhabit is a triumph. The environments are detailed and varied, the level design is open-ended and natural, the weapons are powerful and deadly, and the violence is graphic, yet grounded. The characters are layered and believable, making it difficult not to empathize with their struggle and want to help them achieve their goals. There's no denying that Naughty Dog did an excellent job with the characterization of both Ellie and Joel, and even ancillary characters are given considerable depth through tattered notes and optional dialogue. There's also some effective environmental storytelling which makes the world here feel truly lived in. However, in spite of its layered characters and excellent world building, Naughty Dog decided to use one of the most cliched and stereotypical premises to build their game upon. Besides its above average characterization, is there really anything to distinguish The Last of Us from every other post-apocalyptic zombie story out there? The overall narrative here relies heavily on common tropes from just about every other zombie outbreak story that you can think of. We have the obligatory immune character that may or may not be humanity's last hope. We have the gruff, misanthropic anti-hero who is still haunted by his tragic past. We have the collapse of society and warring factions vying for control over humanity's future. And of course, we have the not-so-subtle underlying theme about whether or not the world would be better off if humanity ceased to exist. There's nothing inherently wrong with reinterpreting tried-and-true concepts. There's a reason that the hero's journey is such a prominent recurring storyline within fiction. However, instead of reintroducing these concepts from a fresh and unique perspective, Naughty Dog has outright ripped scenarios from other sources verbatim without truly making it their own. There isn't a single concept presented in the narrative that wasn't explored more thoroughly in other works of fiction. Movies such as Children of Men, I Am Legend, and even Mad Max have delved into the themes that The Last of Us presents in a much more visceral and novel way. They play with the themes of post-apocalyptic humanity while providing new insights in the process. For example, Children of Men uses the infertility of mankind as a metaphor for humankind's loss of innocence, hope, and perspective toward an optimistic future. The regression to our baser instincts, the grief over what was, the anger over what could be, and the hope that a new child represents to our species is all masterfully conveyed by redefining cliches and tropes in order to build something wholly original and fresh. Even video games such as This War of Mine, the Telltale Walking Dead series, Spec Ops Line, and classic Resident Evil have presented themes that The Last of Us has in far more unique and interesting ways by using the medium's strengths as opposed to its weaknesses. The way that Naughty Dog has opted to present their story is lazy and works only in subverting the medium that it's supposedly masterfully taking advantage of. Video games with the most touching and emotionally charged stories tend to present their themes not through overly scripted, non-interactive cutscenes, but through moment-to-moment -moment gameplay where the mechanics themselves relay information to the player. For example, Team Ico's Shadow of the Colossus is a perfect illustration of how less can be so much more. It is a game with a simple premise. 
Slaughter the Colossi strewn across a forbidden land in order to resurrect a girl who has been sacrificed for unknown reasons. After a short introductory sequence, the game allows players to actually experience the world that the developers have created. There are clear indicators of what the player must do, but the game developers actually respect you enough to place control into your hands from the outset. The game doesn't force you to walk through bland corridors as NPCs regurgitate expository dialogue. The game won't interrupt your gameplay with melodramatic cutscenes about how much you should care about your character and his struggle, and the game doesn't feature partner characters who will consistently attempt to break your immersion. On the contrary, Team Ico wasn't interested in telling the player exactly how to feel or what to think, because they were sagacious enough to craft a scenario where your thoughts and feelings are organically created by simply interacting with the game world itself. Once you come to find that the only other living things that exist within the Forbidden Land are the Colossi, it's difficult not to feel a sense of dread, loneliness, and regret as you slaughter them one by one. Killing the Colossi isn't depicted as an act of heroism, nor is it presented as a depraved act of cruelty. However, many questions may arise in your mind about whether or not the ends justify the means as you slaughter them one by one. As the Wanderer continues on his journey with you, his appearance slowly degrades with each Colossi defeated. However, he never complains, he never monologues about his sacrifice, he's never self-indulgent because his actions tell you everything that you need to know about him, which in turn makes you connect with him that much further. Let's briefly compare Agro, the Wanderer's horse, to The Last of Us's Ellie as a partner and, more importantly, as a game mechanic. Agro allows players to quickly traverse large environments, dodge enemy attacks, quickly catch up to fast-moving enemies, and can also help with scaling the Colossi, whereas Ellie will sometimes toss a bottle at an enemy during action sequences and maybe point out an enemy that's outside of your line of sight from time to time. Ellie will also get stuck on hostile enemies and level geometry, flagrantly run around during stealth sequences, and comment about how much she enjoys video games, which is always a nice thing. If Ellie's presence were stripped from the player, very little would be lost, whereas if Agro were stripped from the player, it'd be akin to chopping off your right hand. You are allowed to bond with Agro organically because he's always there to help you and augment your abilities, whereas any sense of connection that you may or may not feel for Ellie is wholly contingent on forced artificial expository dumps and highly scripted non-interactive cutscenes. If Naughty Dog wanted us to connect with Ellie on a visceral level, they would have made her mechanically relevant. Perhaps she'd be able to lure enemies away from you, perhaps she'd be able to hold extra items, perhaps she could be directed to kill certain enemies, etc. 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 Anything would have been better than the system that we currently have at play where Ellie is at best an RNG boon and at worst an immersion breaking nuisance. The reason that Team Ico was so much more successful with Shadow of the Colossus is because they decided to place emphasis on what makes gaming unique amongst other mediums, its interactivity. Instead of focusing on interactivity, Naughty Dog decided that the best way to create an amazing video game is to emulate film. What particularly concerns me about the praise that titles such as The Last of Us tend to garner is how constraining this shallow design philosophy tends to be. The Last of Us isn't a game that pushes the medium forward, it constrains it by attempting to be something that it isn't. Story first game design is a misnomer. Just about every title that I can think of which applies this myopic design philosophy tends to be shallow and vacuous from a gameplay standpoint, The Last of Us notwithstanding. The Last of Us is supposedly a survival game, and ostensibly that may very well seem to be the case. It has slow-paced gameplay, scary monsters, somewhat limited ammo, and item crafting. However, a survival game is a title where death has consequences. Item and resource management are crucial to progression, enemies are imposing and powerful, and the environment itself is an obstacle that must be overcome. The Last of Us is little more than a stealth-focused third-person shooter with a zombie motif. Death means returning to a checkpoint. There's no game-defining environmental exploration, puzzles are assiduously recycled, health is abundant, and enemies are too inconsistent to be the imposing spectacles that they should be. 
there are at least a few resources that can be gathered in order to craft items such as health kits and shivs, and to give the developers some credit, there was some sort of conscious effort to make crafting interesting because there are multiple items such as health kits and molotovs which require the same exact resources to create. This leaves players with some semblance of choice in how to tackle situations, but given how exploitable both the enemy AI and checkpoints are, these design elements come across as mere affectations at best. They exist only to make players feel as though their crafting decisions have a lasting effect on the gameplay, when in actuality you can get through the vast majority of the game without crafting a single item. The lack of a proper inventory in and of itself makes the game feel incredibly lacking. There's never a moment where you'll need to choose between a health item or ammunition. You won't have to drop crafting items in order to make room in your inventory for a new weapon or key item. There's very little that the player is allowed to manage besides their preference between bricks and glass bottles. Yet this is what passes for medium defining mechanical complexity in this day and age? Okay. Finally, there's perhaps the game's most glaring issue in that it lacks cohesion. The game scenarios rarely overlap with one another. If you aren't fighting with clickers, you are in a forced walking sequence. If you aren't in a forced walking sequence, you're watching a cutscene. If you aren't watching a cutscene, you are fighting scavengers. If you aren't fighting scavengers, you are exploring a quiet area for items. Why isn't there a sequence in The Last of Us where you are forced to explore a wide area where Joel must find a key on one side of the map that's perhaps guarded by human enemies, then must use the key on the other side of the map where clickers are roaming? In this instance, the player might even be able to pit the two sets of enemies against one another. The level design would be free to be complex and multilateral, the environments could be wide enough for the characters to give their thoughts on certain areas to expand the story a little bit, the developers might have even been able to infuse a couple of interesting puzzles into the environment, and of course the player would be given free reign to tackle the scenario in various ways, making for far more player control. The way that the game is currently set up makes each combat scenario feel unremarkable and solitary. A combat sequence feels completely separate from a story sequence. A walking sequence feels completely separate from a puzzle sequence. There is no unity here, there's no cohesive vision, there's just a segmented experience that's more interested in forcing players into a box as opposed to allowing them free reign to experiment. There isn't a single thing about The Last of Us from a thematic or gameplay perspective that hasn't been done better in other titles. Want an intense stealth game? Go back and play Thief 2. Want a heart-wrenching bonding story? Go play Telltale's The Walking Dead. Want an intense third-person shooter? Go play Resident Evil 4. Want an interactive action film? Play Uncharted 2. Want a deep and intense horror story? Play Silent Hill 2. Want a medium-defining masterpiece? Play Shadow of the Colossus. Want a mediocre pastiche of poorly defined design elements with a cliché story? Play The Last of Us. Now, does this mean that The Last of Us is the worst game ever made? Of course not. It's a good game with good ideas and a good story with good characters, but that's all it is. Good. There isn't anything about The Last of Us that redefines games or the way that players experience games. Each of its elements fail to cohesively coalesce with one another, making it feel disjointed and unremarkable. It's a very by-the-numbers experience. It's simple and effective, and there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. Not every game needs to be a genre-defining masterpiece. The point of contention between me, the gaming media, and likely many of you out there listening is that I'm not interested in celebrating banality as excellence because when we do so, the overall quality of games that we receive tends to diminish. There is a reason that the current industry is plagued with iterative, shallow AAA yearly releases that fail to innovate on even the most basic levels. Naughty Dog has never been a developer known for innovation. They are developers who are good at homogenizing the ideas of more talented studios into polished and enjoyable packages. They are incredibly great at what they do, but video games are about gameplay and interactivity. It doesn't matter how great your story is if your game mechanics are lacking. Over the last few years, Naughty Dog has made a name for themselves by creating entertaining stories, however they are woefully inept at creating gameplay systems that properly contextualize those stories. There is a lot more that can be done with the medium in regards to storytelling, but I believe that developers such as Naughty Dog are taking the easy way out by creating a dichotomy between gameplay and story sequences. Titles that truly push the medium forward will always find ways to infuse story and gameplay so as to make them indistinguishable from one another. I don't play games to be told stories, I play them to experience stories, and sadly, this isn't one of Naughty Dog or the industry at large's current strengths. 
I've heard some people foolishly describe The Last of Us as gaming Citizen Kane, which is absolutely ignorant and myopic. It shows that the people describing this game have no understanding of what made Citizen Kane such a masterwork in its medium, and how little they truly understand about video games as an art. Citizen Kane is considered a masterpiece in film because it used the power of its medium to provide an experience that only its medium could provide. It used subtle lighting, scene composition, lens focus, etc. in ways that no one had ever thought of before. It was innovative, it paved the way for what films would be from that point on. The Last of Us does no such thing for gaming. The Citizen Kane of video games would be something more akin to... Metroid Prime, or Journey, or Shadow of the Colossus, or Dark Souls, where the elements of a video game, most importantly its interactivity, are used to effectively produce an experience that only this medium could ever provide. Perhaps if more developers were interested in using the medium's strengths in order to craft amazing experiences, then we wouldn't be celebrating the banality that is The Last of Us as some sort of shining beacon within the industry. With that said, what are your thoughts on The Last of Us? Do you believe that it was a masterpiece? Do you believe that it was trash? Do you believe that I'm being too harsh on The Last of Us? What games do you consider to be masterpieces? How about story-based game design? Do you believe that it does the medium justice, or do you feel that it holds it back like I do? Whatever your thoughts are, be sure to comment below and let me know what you think. Once again, my name is Atrophy of Soul. Thank you very kindly for listening, and be sure to have yourselves a fine day.